Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we get to learn a little bit more about the vertical motion equation. Yesterday we talked about this equation as an extra formula to play with along with our area formulas for a rectangle and a rectangular prism. Today we're going to use this equation much more as a tool to get some real answers to some real word problems. So you have to know how to interpret each one of the variables in this equation. So that's what I'm going to help you with tonight. Your ultimate goal here today is to be able to set up and solve one of these vertical motion equations. Now, as we talked about a little bit yesterday, uh, this vertical motion equation will describe the height of any object in free fall after t seconds. Now, there's a lot more going on than just height, which is over here, uh, signified by h, and time, which is measured in seconds and signified by t, uh, but that's the gist of it. it. This will give the height of an object after t seconds for any projectile so long as you're on the planet Earth and so long as we ignore uh, wind resistance or air resistance. So again, your ultimate goal is to be able to set up and solve one of these yourself, so you got to know what each variable is. The trickiest one is h. h is the height of the object after a certain time or at a certain time. So keep in mind that the height of this object will be changing as it goes through its uh, projectile path up and then down. Okay, uh, so this h depends on a certain time t uh, in the equation. So that will change. The other two e tidbits that you have to insert will be an initial velocity, which is the starting velocity of an object and the initial height of an object. So if it was launched off of uh, a balcony or something that was not at ground level, you can insert that there. And this will, this initial velocity, you can have uh, be a variety of things. A bullet from a gun is gonna be going faster than someone throwing a ball into the air. So you have to account for it there. Um, so we have to know how to use each one of these. And like we said before, there are two versions of it. One for imperial units, feet and seconds, and one for metric units, uh, for meters and seconds. And the only difference between these two equations is uh, a negative 16 and a negative 4.9. Everything else is the same, and all you have to do is decide which situation you're in. Now one question that might have popped into your head is we spent the first half of the year dealing with linear equations, that was straight lines, and you're probably wondering why we can't describe the motion of a falling object with a linear equation. And the answer to that has to deal with gravity and how gravity affects falling objects. And it happens that linear equations are really good at describing things that happen at a constant rate. So if something's traveling at a constant speed or if you're getting charged a constant rate for uh, some sort of service, Linear equations do a very good job of that, but that's not how the way uh, that's not how objects fall. If something falls for the first second that it's falling, it won't go very fast. But if it the if it falls for a second second, uh, it will fall much faster. So it'll fall faster and faster the longer it is falling. So the more time an object spends falling, the faster it will go. And MIT has an excellent demonstration of this in their YouTube video here. And the way it's set up is they have a strobe light uh, flashing up against a backboard with one quarter meter marks. And a little lab assistant is going to enter here and drop a ball in front of this board while the strobe light is going. And the strobe light is going to take a picture every time it goes off. And he's just going to drop it now. Then he's going to play it in slow motion, so we can kind of see between each strobe of that light, the ball falls a longer and longer amount between each strobe. And we finally get an image that looks like that. And at each time the strobe shot, they took a picture of the ball's position. And you can see when it first starts falling, the difference between uh, the distances is very small, but by the end of it, it's actually falling more than one quarter of one meter by the end of it. I have another representation of this same situation, 
uh, with a graph off to the left. And you see this picture on the right will show you exactly how far it falls between each one quarter of one second. And this graph off to the side, you can probably read this and say, the ball is falling faster and faster and faster, and it's falling faster towards the ground the longer it falls. And you can see the same thing here. It's covering more distance over the same amount of time. So it's falling faster the, the longer it falls. And that's why a linear equation doesn't work, is because linear equations can't handle a different uh, a rate of change that is not constant. So back to our stuff here. Uh, we've got an imperial units equation and we've got a metric equ units equation. So one of the things you might notice is that these functions or these formulas are actually set up a lot in function form. If you imagine that that's a number, obviously that's a number, but imagine you doing a little work and making that a number and that a number, you might notice that you have kind of an input output style function. You have h all by itself over here in function form and you have t as an input. So these things work as functions. So I can plug in a t, a time for t, and it'll kick out an overall height of that object for that time. The first example I have is doing exactly that. So here's the situation. A ball is tossed into the air at an initial upward velocity of 35 meters per second from an initial height of five meters. And the question is, how high is the ball after two seconds? So we're gonna use one of these two equations. And the first decision you have is actually a pretty major one. It's, it's fairly easy to make, but uh, you do have a major decision. Which equation do you wanna use? I will give you a moment to think that over, pause the video, and then play when you're ready again. If you look in this word problem, you'll notice that the units are given in meters per second and in meters. So that right away should say, hey, I'm gonna use the equation over on the right because the one on the right has to deal with everything in metric units. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start off with the general formula. It's exactly the same as the one up in the upper right-hand corner, except it's not color-coded to show you the things that you need to plug in. Uh, but we do need to plug those things in. So we need to search out some information. We want to fill in as much of these spots as possible. Um, ideally, let's put it in function form first. So let's just worry about the V and the S, because those are the two concepts that we're probably not familiar with and might be a little uncomfortable substituting for. So look at the word problem try to find an initial velocity and an initial height. Pause and play. If you look at it, they're labeled nicely for you this time. It says initial upward velocity of 35 meters per second and an initial height of five meters. So uh, the initial velocity, the V will be 35 and the S will be five meters, just like that. So I can substitute those in directly. Okay, all I do is change the V to a 35 and the S to a 5. After that, now we see we've got H all by itself and it's depending on T. So this is a input output style function. And all we have to do is figure out how high the ball is after two seconds. So T is two. So we're just gonna straight up plug in two for T. And I did put it in parentheses just to remind you that I'm substituting right there. Um, and the great thing about this is that your calculator is smart enough to do all those orders of operation in the correct order, so you don't have to think about it. This is actually fairly doable without a calculator, so uh, don't shy away from that if you if you wish. Um, but if you were to type it in your calculator, we haven't done many of these, so I wanted to show you exactly what it would look like in your calculator. Um, negative, use the negative key, 4.9 times two. You can use the squared key or the caret key. Um, and plus sign 35 times two plus five. So that all that's normal, but using that little exponent key there and making sure that you don't forget that negative. Uh, if you do forget that negative, you will get the wrong answer. Um, type that in, you get 55.4 meters, and that's your answer. So after two seconds, after launching or throwing the ball up in the air at that fast, it should be 55.4 meters tall. And I have a graph of it over here that we can confirm that. So if we look at two seconds, which is right there, I can trace that up 
on the graph and I can see how high it is. And if we tr trace it over, it looks like I'm right at about 55 and 55.4. I believe that. Hey, math works occasionally. So on to our next one. The next one is a little bit more difficult. And this one, we're going to have to set up an equation and do a little bit of extra interpreting. What I'd like you to do right now is just take a look at the word problem itself and decide what equation you want to use. Here's the situation. A potato is shot vertically from a launcher. That's supposed to say from. From a launcher at 62 feet per second from the edge of a rooftop that is 45 feet above the ground. And our job is to figure out after how many seconds will the potato hit the ground. Which equation do you want to use? Pause and play. For this one, we should be using the one that has imperial units. Okay, so everything in here was in feet or feet per second. So we want to use the imperial unit ones. Uh, so the one with the negative 16. Our next job is to figure out an initial velocity and an initial height. Those are fairly obvious numbers in here. Pause and play. See if you can set that up. If you set that up, you've got V equals 62 feet per second and uh, your initial height is 45 feet. So you can pop those into the equation just like that. And then we got a little bit more work to do. There's no more numbers left over. So all the rest is interpretation. And our biggest hint comes in the question. It says, after how many seconds will the potato hit the ground? And you kind of have to ask yourself, well, how high is the ground? And the answer is zero feet. So it says, after how many seconds? So we know that's the question mark. That's what we're trying to find. But does it hit, after how many seconds does it hit the ground? So H is zero in this case. That's the tricky part. So after we know that we're solving for T, then we just plug in a zero for our H. And all of a sudden, we've got something equal to zero. We've got a trinomial. And it looks like we stand a pretty good shot at factoring that. However, you might notice that the first term is negative, and that's never a good thing. So divide or multiply by a negative 1, and then we're a little bit more factorable. Still, though, there's no GCF. Uh, our first term is positive, and the equation is equal to 0, but we're still having a tough time factoring it. So this is definitely an asterisk problem, but it's not too bad. Um, I've got one set up over here. Try to find a pair of numbers that multiplies to be negative 720 and adds up to be negative 62. It's easier than you'd think. Uh, pause and play. Okay, if you've done that right, you get negative 62, negative 72, and 10, uh, and they will add up. They will simplify to be 2t over negative 9 and 8t over positive 5. So those two little fractions give us our factored form of this equation. And then we can cruise. Then we can do what we've been doing the whole time. We can set up two small equations, one for each of our factors that is being multiplied equal to 0. And we can solve each one of those. Add 9 and then divide by 2. So if we add 9 and divide by 2, we get 9 halves or 4.5. And this one, we take negative, subtract 5, then divide by 8, and you will get 0.625. So our two answers are 4.5 or negative 0.625. And just like yesterday, we have an answer that doesn't seem to make very much sense. This one. That one doesn't make very much sense because it's a negative. And it, in particular, it's a negative time. And we can never have a negative time. Negative time is like the ultimate illegal thing. So uh, again, you're going to get multiple solutions. And maybe one or two or you know a number of them don't make sense. And you have to filter through them and find the ones that do make sense. So that one doesn't make any sense. I'm going to get rid of that. I did forget a label here. Let's put that seconds. There we go. That's much better. Label all your answers and make sure it's ready to go. That's the toughest sort of problem that we have to deal with tomorrow. So I bid you goodbye and I will see you tomorrow.